From Santee Cooper to the Charleston County School District, Representative Lynn Bennett of Charleston is busy. I sit down exclusively with the state representative for this edition of Quintan's Close-Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and download my free Quintan's Close-Ups app in your Apple or Google Play stores. And listen to this interview Thursday on iHeartRadio. Representative Lynn Bennett. Welcome to Quentin's Close-Ups again. Good to see you again, my friend. Likewise. Thank you for coming up to Columbia to visit us today. Oh, you're very welcome. I, you know, I was talking to you off camera, and obviously you guys are overwhelmed with a lot of things going on. Teachers Bill, you have the issue at the Charleston County School District, you have Santee Cooper. What is it like to be representing Lynn Bennett these days? It's busy, folks. It's real busy out there. But I don't mind because I think that we're getting things done for you. I hope we're getting them done the right way, that we're paying attention. And so the busyness doesn't bother me. Getting it right bothers me. Mm. Well, I want to get it right. Sure, sure. What are those issues or bills right now that you really want to get right for your constituents? Education, and it's not just um, for our constituents, Clinton, it's for our students. Um, we're still last. We're still fighting for a good education. It doesn't seem like rocket science. Teachers want it. We want it. The system really doesn't want it. <laughs> what is the South Carolina, well, the state of South Carolina's relationship with the educational system right now in your mind? Well, I think we're fine with the educational system. I think we're fine with the teachers. You know, there's been a lot of back and forth with our teachers talking about the issues that concern them and and educating our children. So I think that relationship is working, at least with me, is working out fine. Those teachers that come and talk to me, um, you know, we get it. And they know I get it, for one thing. Um, but there are just, you know, there is so much to our education system from from the funding to the local boards to the state oversight that it becomes difficult to try to pull this together we've spent so many years piecemealing our education system including the funding that we we now have a mess and so i guess just it's like spaghetti mm. when you pull one noodle out it's going to rearrange all the other noodles laying on the plate so it just it's going to take a while but i think we're going to get there I was hoping we get there this year, but if we don't get there this year, when I come back next term, we'll, we're close. close. We're that close. I think it will work out. Work out. How's that funding working out? Well, we have over 100 different funding mechanisms in our state to fund education. That's because we piecemealed so much over time. And, you know, we, we put in money to do a certain thing and we may not even be doing that thing right now we don't know so we've got department of revenue looking through the funding mechanisms that we have and helping us to try to look at ways to consolidate them to make it easier to get more money into the classroom for the teachers and the students the supplies and the educational stuff that they need to get their job done and and that's just you know the funding versus the curriculum mm -hmm. Are two separate pots. You know, we have to go through ways and means sure. for funding. But we first have to know what we're doing before we can go there and say, we need you to do this with the money. So right now we're trying to get the curriculum education part done, and then we'll work at trying to improve the, the way the funding comes down the pipe. When you look at the curriculum right now, what are you looking at, Representative Bennett? I am looking for... Um, Several things. One thing is the uh, the over testing that we do of our children. Um, we have found over the summer we did these um, meetings with teachers of the year. Yeah. One of the things we found is a lot of these school districts do a lot of testing. The teachers never see the results of those tests. So how are they supposed to respond to those children's needs if they don't see the results? Um, we find that some schools just give up too much testing. So we're looking at trying to streamline that, making sure teachers and parents receive the results of this test so they can know where to go, so they can know how to address the weaknesses or the problems that this child might have in his learning thing. And then um, and then we need to look at a pathway to a career as opposed to just college, because a lot of kids aren't going to go to college. 
a lot of kids aren't interested in going to college. So those kids get left behind because they're just not interested in what's going on. They don't want to, but, but there are things that they can do. There are well-paying jobs out there that these kids could do, and we need to offer them the opportunity to take that path. Take that path. Let me get back to, obviously, over-testing. You talk about that streamline. What is exactly that right now that you're looking at? Well, you know, there's, there's tests that are federally mandated. We can't do anything about those tests. The state of South Carolina requires six tests. Four of them we can remove easily. Then we have learned that the local districts do a series of testing like SC Ready or MAP testing. Right. Um, and some of them do all of them. Some of them only do a couple of them. Some do all of them. So in some districts, kids are doing nothing but being tested. Mm. So what we like to see is that that, that local requirement is cut back. The, the testing that they're doing actually measures what the child is doing and where the child needs to go and that those results get out to a teacher so that the teacher can help facilitate a path to success for that student. How much would that cost you all? Actually, it will not cost us much because these local districts are spending these money buying these tests aren't free. Mm. So they're spending a lot of money buying these tests that they're administering. They could save that money and use it for education. Education. And let me stay on education because obviously the big talk back home is about obviously the Charleston County School Board. Oh, Lord. What a mess. And I understand from Channel 4, they basically said this. The Charleston County uh, State Legislative Delegation has proposed sweeping reform to the County School Board. And as we sit here right now, Representative Bennett, a lot of people are wondering, is this going to be statewide and not just Charleston County in your mind? Well, we have local control, so that kind of makes it, it makes it, each district can do what they want to do. We have decided um, that we want to go to single member districts just because the way we're set, parents don't feel like they're being represented because their district, their member is not elected in the district, the member is elected statewide. Right. Um, so when they when they get unhappy, which they are right now, then they call us because they want some kind of results. So we have tried to work with them. Um, I don't necessarily think that every district in the state is going to do that. Um, and I just think this is the right time because we have such upset and contention in our county about some things that are be, are going on. And the, mostly parents just don't feel like no one's listening to them. And I'm not saying that was, what the school board is proposing is wrong. I'm just ask, we're just asking all of us, asking them to slow down, educate the public, provide information and data, statistics, to show us that what you're doing is going to work. And we just can't seem to get to that point. In the time, well, in this, I guess, free month status, you know, obviously with you all meeting with them and obviously this legislation coming up, have you all been able to get any type of data to ask to, as far as them slowing it down? Uh, no, we've asked for meetings. They have, they've granted us a meeting. However, it was after they passed everything. It was after the fact. So um, um, I did have one board member give me some information, but it wasn't as in-depth as I would have liked. Mm -hmm. Um I think it was more projected what they thought they might, which is not bad. Um, but this information could have been shared with the public and the parents, I think. Um, I have one board member that's just upset that we're doing this. Uh, and I'm sorry for that. But, you know, after this meeting, there was another smaller meeting where only some legislators and some board members got together to talk. And apparently that didn't go anywhere either. So, you know, we just... We need to make the parents feel comfortable and make, make the students feel like that everything that's being done is done, being done for them on their behalf of their education. And I know you have to run, but let me talk to you a little bit about the breakdown because here's how it worked according to Channel 4. The bill would eliminate the eight current school board representation districts in Charleston County. And the school board was switched to nine new single member districts that you just mentioned. What will be those new member districts in your mind? They will be based on our current county council districts. Mm. So they'll be more balanced. Because if you go look up these districts, right. you know, some people have 46,000, some people have 10. So this will balance out the representation of, of the board districts to their constituents. To their constituents. And also in the article it reads this, that would mean one school board representative will be elected for each of the nine districts as opposed to the current structure which sees seven or seven members elected at large. What exactly would that school board representative do? 
I would assume the school board representative will do what they're supposed to do now, only they will now have a defined constituent base that they would be accountable to. Accountable to. And let me get over to the other side because board chairman Eric Mack uh, said this to Channel 4. He says this quote, speaking as chairman, I find it very disappointing that some members of the elected legislative delegation are using this bill as an opportunity to punish the school board members for voting in a way that goes against their opinion. What is your opinion the school board, Lynn? Um, our school board for a very long time has always had a very negative reputation. Um, and it's been going on for a long time and we haven't been able to seem to get past that. I'm sorry that the chairman feels that way. Um, we are responding to our constituents who came to us because they couldn't get an answer from the local school board. And so I, I know they're not going to be happy. I don't guess I would be happy either. But sometimes change is good. Sometimes change is necessary. And I think we're at that point where we need some change. And I know that should the bill pass according to Channel 4 and be signed into law by the governor, it would take effect this year. Why this year? How many years do our children have to survive in a failing system? One thing that always bothers me about our our confrontation of educational issues is that every year that goes by, we lose a crop of children to failure because we haven't done anything to help them. Everything we should do, everything we do should happen more quickly. Will this happen quickly? Well, our hope is that it will, but it, it may not. It may not. And Santee Cooper, how quickly do you want some help with that in your mind? Well, I haven't even seen any of the recommendations on Santee Cooper yet. Um, I am open to anything, okay. whatever their recommendation is, as long as it gets this mess under control. So I'm willing to hear whatever anyone's got to say, but get this mess under control and quit playing with this. And what recommendation is ideal in your mind right now, what you're looking at, what you're focused on? For Santee Cooper? Yes, ma'am. Um, Right now, my inclination is to want to sell it um, because we've, we've allowed them to continue running themselves and they've done things like pay, pay out enormous salaries still and not get their debt under control. And, you know, I know that the, the customers of Santee Cooper um, are, you know, they're concerned about the costs and raising, but I want to tell the people, it is not just the customers of Santee Cooper that will pay this bill. This is a state-owned agency. Every single taxpayer in the state of South Carolina will be held responsible for this if we don't do it right. State Representative Lynn Bennett, thank you so much for your time. Thank Again, you. Yeah, welcome back to Quintus Colts. Thank you. Yeah, Good thank to be you. Here. Likewise.